So today we're going to talk about tocotrienols. Now, what are they? They're, they're part of the vitamin E complex. In nature, vitamin E has about eight different parts to it. Okay, Half of it is tocopherols, and half of it is something called tocotrienols. And the different names um, of tocopherols would be alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. Same thing with tocotrienols, alpha, beta, gamma, delta. Okay, The Greek word for tocotrienols comes from tokos, offspring, furrow, to bear, to bear children because of its effect on fertility. Okay, Because if you're deficient in vitamin E, specifically this part, you're going to become infertile. 95% of the studies done in vitamin E run to cofferols, not on tocotrienols. Okay? And this is why in the news you see this interesting data about high doses of vitamin E increasing your risk of all-cause mortality. Basically telling you, stay away from this because it's going to kill you. Well, what they didn't tell you was that they're using high dosage of synthetic vitamin E, which is alpha to cofferol. They're not using the natural source. They're not even using tocotrienols. Now, this data that I'm showing you is based on this quite amazing book called Tocotrienols Vitamin E Beyond Tocopherols. Okay, This is all the research done on tocotrienols. It's quite utterly amazing. So I'll touch on this in a little bit, but I wanted to cover a couple things. Tocotrienols has some very powerful properties that tocopherols does not have. Number one, it has neuroprotective factors. It helps protect the nervous system and the brain against oxidative damage. Number two, it has anti-cholesterol properties. In fact, uh, tocopherol has even been shown to increase cholesterol, whereas tocotrienols actually can help lower cholesterol. It also has other benefits like cardiovascular benefits. It makes the arteries less stiff. It helps make your liver less fatty, improves the skin, and improves hair growth, prevents sterility, and it also protects against stroke. Now, I want to show you something in this book, which is quite interesting. Um, back in the 30s, uh, the Shute brothers, which they had a huge clinic, they were medical doctors, uh, and this is based on 30,000 patients, okay? And they were, they were mainly studying uh, vitamin E um, back then. And I want to just kind of go through the benefits that they mentioned from vitamin E. And I'm talking about the whole complex. 1936, improvements in angina. That's chest pain, okay? 1940, fibroids, endometriosis, atherosclerosis. Uh, 1945, hemorrhages in the skin, mucous membranes, and decreased requirement for insulin. Interesting. 1947, therapy for gangrene. Because gangrene usually comes from necrosis or breakdown of the tissue from uh, diabetes because you're having this oxidative stress uh, affecting the circulation. So uh, because vitamin E is such a powerful antioxidant, it has the potential uh, as a therapy for gangrene. Um, 1948, lupus, shortness of breath. 1950, varicose vein benefits, severe burn benefits. But I want to read you something else because they were highly criticized by mainstream medicine back then. And I want to just uh, read a little quote. Um, it says, it was nearly impossible now for anyone who valued his future in academia to espouse, that means support, vitamin E, prescribe it, or advise it. That would make a man a quack at once. This situation lasted for many years. No amount of documentation could budge medical men from this stance. Literature in the positive was ignored and left unread. Individual doctors often said, if it was as good as you say, we would all be using it. Okay? So this is what they were up against. Of course, we're still up against that. But the benefits of taking the complete complex are immense. Um, Anti-cancer properties, anti-cholesterol, very powerful antioxidant properties. Tocotrienols are 50 times stronger than tocopherols, especially when you're dealing with the oxidation of iron in the body. It creates immune improvements. It's anti-tumor, supports the cardiovascular system, antimicrobial, and the list goes on and on. All right, guys, so what foods are high in vitamin E? Of course, the nuts, the seeds, uh, fish, 
uh, egg yolk, and especially leafy green lettuce and other vegetables. All right, see you later. Let's talk about the most important function of vitamin E, and that is it stabilizes cell membranes. Now, what's interesting about the cell membrane is that it has a double layer of fat, both saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. So people are always concerned about, oh my gosh, saturated fat, you need to avoid it. Well, the cell membrane is made out of saturated fat and cholesterol. And you have all sorts of things happening at the cellular membrane. You have the protection of the inside of the cell. You have all these mini little organs, they're called organelles. Uh, you have a little energy factory in there called the mitochondria. You have the lysosome, which is the garbage disposal. You have the DNA in the nucleus. You have the protein factories. You have little factories that make uh, things out of lipids. So there's a lot going on and the cell membrane is there to protect it. And then you have billions of little pumps. One would be the sodium potassium pump. And this pump generates a lot of energy to activate the muscles and the nerves. And its primary job is to keep sodium out of the cell and potassium in to create this battery. And that electrical charge is inside the cell and that can actually be used by the muscles and the nerves to allow them to function. So vitamin E helps prevent the oxidation of this fat layer right here, as well as the fat structures inside the cell. It's a significant antioxidant and it does work with selenium as well. It prevents retinopathy, which is a disease of your retina, which is the uh, nerve of the eye. It's basically an extension of the brain sticking out in the eye. And the reason why vitamin E prevents this condition is because vitamin E is all about protecting fat soluble structures. And anything related to nerve has a fat layer. It's called myelin sheath because vitamin E is a fat soluble vitamin. It also supports glutathione, which is a, the most powerful antioxidant in your body, and it mainly works in your liver. It also prevents nerve damage. Why? Because of the myelin sheath, which is all fat. Now, most of the vitamin E is stored in the liver and the fat cell, but with significant amounts inside your pituitary. So think about it. All the sex hormones, the estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, even cortisol, originate as a controlling hormone in your pituitary. So because these hormones are made out of cholesterol and fat, you need high levels of vitamin E to protect them from being oxidized. And by the way, one of the functions of estrogen is to act as an antioxidant. So during menopause, when estrogen goes down with other hormones like progesterone, even testosterone, and if you don't have enough vitamin E to compensate, hot flashes can kick in there. And this is why vitamin E as a remedy will help to reduce hot flashes. But make sure if you, anytime you take vitamin E, always take it in the natural form and get something that includes all the decopherols with the tocotrienols as one big complex. Vitamin E also has been shown to decrease fibrosis of the liver. Why? Because it's an antioxidant and fibrosis occurs from all the free radical damage and inflammation in the liver, and without vitamin E, it can continue, so it can help mitigate cirrhosis. Another thing that happens when you take vitamin E is your muscles seem to get stronger. So if you're deficient in vitamin E, your muscles will be weaker. Typically, people are not deficient in vitamin E because of the diet. It's mainly because of the absorption. Either they had some alteration in the digestive system, whether they had gastric bypass or they had some surgery, or they have scar tissue in the gut, creating um, a lack of absorption, or they don't have a gallbladder or they have sludge in the gallbladder so they don't have enough bile to help them absorb it. I mean, they could be deficient in the diet, but typically it's other causes. But anyway, I wanted to emphasize the importance of vitamin E for your cell membranes. And if you want more information about vitamin E as far as where to get it from the foods, check out this video right here.